Hey, YouTube friends and family. I hope all of you are doing well. We're sweltering. It is so hot. So terribly hot here. But, so it goes. Thank God there's always a way to cool off. Anyway, I wanted to get on here, and I, I don't even know why I am. I have no clue anymore. I went and checked the, uh, oh, what's it called? Analytics of my channel. And I went through video after video looking at the percentage of time that people spend on any one of my videos. And it was very disheartening. I know that many things that I say are not of any real value. It's just sharing what wisdom I have and wisdom that has been handed down. My observance of what's going on. My thoughts of what could happen. And I know to many that doesn't mean much. And I know my videos sometimes are lengthy. I mean, 30 minutes is a long time. So, obviously, what I have to say is not that important. But today, I'm going to get on here and I'm going to make one more attempt and hope that somebody pays attention, that somebody listens. I will tell you this. I always try to be as honest as I can. To me, that is integrity. Honesty is integrity. We have problems. We most certainly do. And it's not just one thing. It is many things. For one, we know that there's problems in D.C. We know that the scandals are very real. But we know that they're being set aside right now, out of public view. Because Trayvon and Zimmerman are the thing. They certainly are. Let's look at this just for a moment, if you will, please. I had a dream. And I don't want to discuss the dream. I don't want to go into the details. It was that horrifying, that bad. But the details that I will share is a parade that went down a street, a huge parade, and the American flag, and on one side the blacks, and on the other side the whites. And there was so much more, so much more. And believe me, our president, was centered. He was right in the middle. <sighs> At the end of the parade. Anyway, I listened to him this morning and I want to say thank you for coming forward and saying something. However, to compare yourself 35 years ago to this event is pathetic. Absolutely pathetic, dear president. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're way out of bounds. You're crossing a line that is not right. This case went to a court of law where jurors made the decision and the verdict came down. Now, do I know who's right and who's wrong? No, I don't. And thank God I wasn't on that jury. Because I would have found them both guilty. I certainly would. For you people that are following blindly Al Sharpton, you really need to think about who he is, where he's been. He is no hero. He most certainly is not. He was very active, I bet, and I'm sure you could look it up, but in the 60s, I'm a child of the 60s. I remember those days very well. The rioting, the burning, the killing, the attacks from dogs and, and racist names and 
whites against blacks and 60s in the 60s how many years ago was that oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh you know Reverend, Reverend, oh, I, I choke on that. I choke on Reverend. Because if he was a man of God, this wouldn't be happening. He wouldn't be calling for division and marches. He certainly was would not. Because that is not how it's supposed to be. I am sick to death of the categorizing the whites, the blacks, the Japanese, the Koreans, the Germans, the French, the English, the this, the that, but good God, there should only be one category, the human race. The human race. You know, he spoke up, what was it he said the other day? He said if they hadn't marched in the 60s, how did he say it? Let me find it here. I don't, I don't want to misquote. I want to say it right. Uh, I say to them that had we not marched in the 60s, they wouldn't be where they are. You know, you marched in the 60s, Al. You certainly did. Along with thousands of other people. People that were confused. People that were trying to find a cause. The movements for peace. And the movements for violence. Good against evil and for anybody that doesn't believe evils out there I feel sorry for you evil is very real it lurks it stinks it slithers and very many people sit down and accept it willing it in to deny that evil exists is a very dangerous ground to be on it certainly is and what we're seeing today is proof of that. There's evil everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Yeah, you marched in the 60s. How many years ago was that, Al? How many years ago? How many years ago was slavery? How many years ago? And you say that we've advanced past that. That we've, uh, how did you say it? where we are, where we are now. You know, looks to me like you carried all that old garbage with you. It looks to me like you put it in a backpack and that you walked down the streets of America carrying that BS with you since day one. You should be ashamed of yourself and you call yourself, you deem yourself a reverend, a man of the cloth. What's the matter with you people? What's the matter with the American people? That you can't see that this is deliberate, that they want a division. We have no power if we're divided. I'm going to tell you something. I had a friend call me one time back in the 70s. She asked me if I would cover her shift because she got sick at work. So I did. She worked in a tavern as a bartender. I jumped in to cover her shift. I worked the shift. I closed the place up. And I gathered up the money satchel to take it down and drop it in the bank. That was the way it was handled every night. You just drive down to the bank, drop it through the drive through deposit box. After I closed the bar up, I went out to my car and as I was trying to get the key in the lock to open my door. 
all of a sudden I was grabbed and I was thrown over the hood, the engine hood of my car, held backwards with this guy's legs against mine and he threw me backwards and he had a bowie knife, a hunting knife at my throat. And he said to me, want a piece of the rock? Want a piece of the rock? I've never been so scared in my, in my life. To be quite frank, I almost peeped down my own legs. Scared me half to death. I said, here's the money, take it. He says, I don't want the money. He said, I want you. Want a piece of the rock? As he held this knife at my throat, my mind was reeling and I was trying to find an answer for this man. So I looked square in his eyes. I looked straight up into his eyes. And I said, yeah, I want a piece of the rock, but you're stupid. You're doing it right here, and this is on a highway. You think the cops aren't going to catch you? I said, you want a piece of me? Follow me. I'll show you where to go. Just follow me. And this drunken fool, he actually believed me. Had a big black pickup. I was in a little Ventura. He followed me. I let him up into a neighborhood. I raced around the neighborhood like a mad woman. Finally, I found an open garage. I pulled into it, shut my car down, turned my lights off as quick as I could. And I listened as he drove around and around and around trying to get me, trying to find me. He wasn't a black man. He was a white man. Evil doesn't see color. Evil does not see color. I'm not saying Trayvon was right, and I'm not saying he was wrong, and I'm not saying Zimmerman was right or wrong. I will say, however, that they both made big mistakes that night. And the court of law passed down a verdict. This happens every day, everywhere in this country. Every day, everywhere in this country. The courts are full of it. So why is this one being made up to be something so big? Because there's an agenda, people. There's an agenda. God help us if we fall for it. And so many people are. I'm going to put a link down below. In this link, you will find where he calls for a uh, where justice for Trayvon, National Day of Action, vigils in a hundred cities. The mother and father of Trayvon Martin to join Reverend Al Sharpton and National Action Network for the 100 city justice for Trayvon vigils. Saturday, July 20th at noon. That's tomorrow, my friends. And I'm going to tell you something. Justice was already done. It went through the courts. Zimmerman's life is ruined. Absolutely ruined. And rest in peace, little Trayvon. Bless your heart. But bless Zimmerman's heart, too. He will live with that the rest of his life. They were both wrong that night. They both behaved poorly. They both made bad decisions. They certainly did. You know, another time I was closing up a bar in Idaho. That first episode was in Washington State. The second time was in Idaho, closing up the bar again, taking out the night cash, going to run one block away down to the bank. As I closed up the bar, I started to go out and there was a black man down the street. He whistled at me and he's motioning to me, no, no, no. And it scared me, not because of his color, but because I didn't know what he was really saying. What, what, what was he trying to tell me? I wanted to back up and walk backwards all the way into the bar. 
but it was already locked. So I started to walk towards my car a little bit faster. And I heard him again. And I froze. Something just told me, listen. So he started motioning to me like this at my car. And I backed up next to the building again and I said, what? He said, there's somebody in your car. The police station was two blocks away. I ran to the police station. Oh, the guy whistling and, and trying to get my attention was a black man. Did I mention that? I got to the police station and Sarge, an officer there that had known me since I was a kid. I went running in and I told him, you know, I was just warned that there's somebody in my car and I've got this cash and I need to get down to the bank, but I'm scared to go to my car. I need an officer. Well, Sarge sent one of the officers with me, a very young, very nice black man. I hopped in his car and down to my car we went. Around the other side of the building came another patrol car with a spotlight that he put on my car. Laying down in the back seat of my car was a man with a gun. With a gun. A white man. A white man. You know, good guys, bad guys. Good guys do bad things. Bad guys do good things. That's just a fact. Evil dwells within every human being, I think. Just waiting for a trigger. Just waiting for a cause. To march like this and cause division in our country is a bad thing. God knows we've got enough issues going on as it is. Things that really need to be dealt with. Homeless, hungry, people losing jobs, people losing their homes, high power cost, the cost of fuel, the cost of food, dear God, the cost of food. So many things that we need to focus on. The universe is confused. We have our sun going down in the wrong place. They say it's a pole shift. Many things that we need to focus on. Standing together, helping one another, getting rid of corrupt government, getting rid of corruption that enslaves every one of us. And for anybody that thinks they're any better than any other color, God help you. You should be ashamed of yourself. For the blacks that think they're better than whites, you should be ashamed of yourself. The whites that think themselves better, you should be ashamed of yourself. We need to get rid, get rid of the categories. There should be but one, the human race. Now, if any of you made it through this video, I thank you. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm just about ready to give up on YouTube because when I saw how unimportant anything I say is to anybody, I have to question why I'm wasting my time. Perhaps I'd be better off standing on a corner with a sign, yelling out, look up, pay attention. I love you all. I love every one of you, no matter your color, your race, your ethnic beliefs, your religious beliefs, your whatever. And Al Sharpton, shame on you. Obama, speak from the heart. Be real just once. Good God. I gotta go, guys. I don't know when I'll be on again. I am so disappointed.